is Manuel Rodriguez, aka Manny Rodriguez. Um, honestly, I think I picked it. I like, I don't know, people like, you know, we watched Manny Ramirez a lot growing up. And, you know, I had the long hair at the time as well. And then, I don't know, the name kind of stuck. And then I just fell with it. I went with it. Uh, you know, coming from New York, people like to say that um, most New Yorkers are cocky. Uh, I'd say I'd say we're really confident with a little bit of cockiness, and then my uncle once told me like if you put your dream out there and people aren't laughing and it's not big enough, and I got a lot of laughs, um, so you know that that also pushed me a lot. And then you know I never I never doubted it. I never doubted myself. I just continued to work hard every day, and here we are. All right, now the baseball. So. Siblings, who else was in the house with you while you were growing up? Um, I had a younger sister, an older brother. Um, me and my older brother were actually, you know, we actually started baseball together at the same time. So anytime a baseball game was on, like, you know, it was me and him on the floor just looking at the TV, you know, watching a game, and yeah, those, those were good memories. Oh, we never, we never put the Yankees on unless they were playing the Red Sox. Uh, we watched a lot of a lot of Mets games for sure. Um, I remember watching the Silver Series a lot. Uh, watching the good old Mets versus Phillies. Um, so yeah, it was it was definitely Mets all the time on TV. What were you What were you thinking? Were you just thinking I, I just want to play? Did you even have dreams at that moment when you were that young about playing pro ball? Uh, I mean, I think the first day that I watched, um, you know, not the first day. I'd, I'd say like you know, I, I grew. I began to get a love for the game, just watching on TV, watching the Mets. And then actually when I went to uh, my first Mets games in the old Shea Stadium was when I like actually like got that spark. Like, wow, like this is what I want to do. And um, yeah, and then, you know, here we are now, like on the journey. I think that's I think that's a mixture of the New Yorker in me and the Dominican in me. Um, I just, you know, when I'm on the field, you know, I take pride in playing defense. Uh, that's definitely one thing that I pride myself on. Um, I just like to stay loose, have fun, make sure everybody around me is having fun. So, you know, I talk a lot with the guys in the infield and the outfield. We used to play this game, actually, here in New York. We had this, uh, this, um, this like, little turf. We had this park by our house. We had this little turf area, and we played this game called Error. So it would be like me, my brother, our friend Caleb, Jordan, Julio, and we would pretty much we'd take turns. So the thing is, you, you hit a ground ball as hard as you can, and the first person to make an error has to go hit him. And it'd be like down point, and we'd like continue, just keep going nonstop. Yeah, that's one of the things that your hands are quick and they're, they're mobile. So, I mean, that game, how many hours and how many times oh, you guys play that game? We would literally like, We'd probably start, like, we go after school, so we'd probably get to the park like around 5, 5.30. And we would be there until like, either our moms were calling us or the one light at the park went off. Uh, it was, it was actually, uh, I don't know, I think that me, my brother, and, you know, a lot of my cousins, we like always found a way. I remember uh, my cousin lives in Sunset Park and he lives in between these like two huge buildings. So what we did was, uh, the batter would be across the street and then the pitcher would be across the street and we'd throw like <laughs> the two gallon coke bottles and we'd use like a broomstick or like if we had like an actual bat in the car we'd use that and if you like hit it past the third floor there's like a single uh, up the fourth floor there's like a double and so on so I just think that you know we kind of just always went with what we had and you know, we just did whatever we could to get better. The little things, you know, hand-eye coordination, things like that. We were just figuring something out. We were never bored. And then there's the, the New Yorker in you, which I don't think you, and maybe you can explain this differently, but it's not until you go to a place like Maryland or you go to a place like Ohio where you like you stay the same, but all of a sudden you come out in contrast with some other people who may not be quite as 
out there as a New Yorker. So what is that like when you go to Maryland High School and you go to Ohio for, for college? Uh, I just think it's awesome because like a lot of you know, a lot of people like in Maryland and, and Ohio, um, I just think that they kind of don't really know what a New York is like till they met me. So again, they, they, <laughs> I was a cocky one of the group, or the confident one. But I just think that um, I was able to kind of bring a different perspective to things, uh, just bring that like big city grittiness vibe to you know to the table. Tell me about your junior year when you didn't get drafted. What, what, were you, what was going through your head? Um, honestly, I had a, a, a lot of. I wouldn't say I just I just I'm a big huge believer on everything happens for a reason, like like huge believer. Um, so you know I was I was mad, I was upset, I was disappointed, but at the same time I kind of took a look in the mirror and I was like, what can I do to to put myself in a better place next year? So you know that summer, one of the best summers of my life. You know I worked out every day, uh, was in the cage twice a day. Put on 22 pounds of muscle, and then I don't know, just really pride and focus on you know getting better each and every day, not just you know going through the motion. And every day before I went to bed, I'd ask myself like, did I get better today? And I can honestly say that every day that I, that I did something that summer and into the fall, I was definitely trying to get better. So I think that instead of feeling bad for myself, I kind of used that disappointment and used that you know that anger a little bit um, to just kind of take my game to the next level. And then you click with the home runs and then add power to your game and then all of a sudden 10th, 10th round from nothing to the 10th round. How much of that did you just take a deep breath and say, F yeah? <laughs> uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was definitely one of the best moments of my life. Um, just seeing you know the hard work pay off, all the hours that we put in. Um, the, it was it was definitely you know um, an awesome moment for sure. Definitely, especially checking uh, that it was the Mets. Um, you know, tears. Honestly, I told my, my brother the news right away, and I think he cried more than me because he just understands like where we come from, what we've been through, um, all the ups and downs. So you know, watching him, uh, you know, tear up definitely brought tears to my eyes. Swinging a high fly towards left field. Shoe is back. Track turns. This one soars over the scoreboard. Manny Rodriguez with his first professional home run. Cooking raw with the Brooklyn boy. It's a solo job. He joins the party in the third and makes it 10 1 Brooklyn. So tell me about your uncle. How, who, who, what's his name and, and how, what, what's his uh, influence on you? His, uh, his name's Juan Zayas. He actually uh, played minor league ball. Um, he is the man that I lived with when I went to high school in Maryland. So, you know, when I was able to go to Maryland, to go to private school, you know, great academic school and baseball school. Um, so I actually stayed with him and my aunt. I lived with them when my parents stayed here. So, you know, he was, he was another father figure to me. Um, taught me a lot of, a lot of life, life lessons, a lot about the game. He kind of always explained to me the process of you know professional baseball, how it's not an easy journey, and how like once you get drafted, once you get picked up, that's not the end; it's just the beginning. So you know, he gave me a lot of a lot of things that I kept inside my head, and that I would I would always be able to go back to and kind of like kind of understand what he was saying at the time. Like there'd be days where I'd be like going through a situation, and I'd think about it and be like, wow, like my uncle was explained that to me like years ago so it kind of makes it easier to go through it. So even now he, he kind of pops in your head. Oh well, yeah. Is there a moment that comes up from this year? Um, I just say that uh, the main thing that he told me that I, I kind of preach to myself and other guys is that uh, baseball and this journey, this professional journey is it's a, it's a marathon not a sprint. So you know obviously you're gonna have some hiccups um, but the main thing is just making adjustments, learning from your mistakes, learning from your failures and yeah, that's, that's the main thing that's like, especially this season, you know. At a rough start, uh, I get hot, I get cold, I get hot, I get cold. So it's just, you know, stay focused, continue to make those adjustments, and then just continue to learn the game. My, I obviously have the confidence and the mindset to come, in, to come in here and dominate. 
but at the same time, like I knew that you know, baseball is a game of ups and downs. Um, you're gonna face you know failure, and I just, I just kind of preparing myself on how I was gonna handle that failure. Um, so I just kind of, you know, I kind of went with the game. Like I said before, earlier in the year, I think I was trying to do too much, so I kind of like took a step back, you know, simplified some things at the plate, and then kind of started to get rolling again. And I just think that for me. What's uh, worked out for me the most, you know, working with Marlins, definitely keeping it simple and not not thinking hard with my swing, but thinking quick, and then just getting my right pitch, and you know, just having discipline up there, knowing the situation of the game, and then you know, at the end of the day, what what can I do with that at bat that will help my team win? Tell me about these tats. Uh, this guy over here, Brooklyn. Show, well, what's this guy? When'd yeah. you get that one? I actually got this one the summer after my freshman year. And I was playing summer ball in Massachusetts. You know, I just it just it just hit me one day. I think I was listening to Biggie, honestly. <laughs> I was, you need a little influence, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I was listening to Biggie, and then just you know, I was a little homesick. So you know, I was like, I've always wanted to get Brooklyn tat on me for sure. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go do it. So I went to the nearest tattoo place that I could find and. Told him to give me a fat Brooklyn on my form. <laughs>